Now, it's been a busy summer in battleground Alberta. The embattled former Premier Alison Redford has resigned as an MLA, and the PC leadership race has been heating up ahead of next month's vote. And it's not just a vote for a new leader. As Monty Solberg explained, the Progressive Conservatives' next top boss will also become the province's Premier, too. And that's why two of the three PC leadership hopefuls are calling on the party to organize a televised debate. Well, joining me now from Edmonton is one of those PC candidates, Rick McIver. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. It's great to be here. Thank you. Rick, I want to start with this idea of the debate because I think everyone expected there would be a debate. And now it seems as if you're having to ask for one um, ahead of the September 6th vote. Why is it necessary even to ask the party to do this? Well, two out of the three candidates have uh, agreed to have a debate, and one see up until uh, today, and we don't know now, seemed to be reluctant. So, uh, the other one, one other candidate, uh, you know, Thomas Lukasik and I uh, said we'd take it to the party and say, please organize a debate. Albertans deserve to know who's going to be the next leader of their government and their province. I think it's the least that Albertans uh, should should expect, and uh, I'm I'm happy to do it, and I hope we get that opportunity. It, it sounds as if you're suggesting, and maybe quite rightly, because the next leader of the party will be the premier. You need a venue that reaches out beyond PC member supporters, beyond party card holders, but you want to talk to all of Albertans, right? Well, we do. All Albertans deserve, whether they vote or not, to know who the next leader is going to be and, uh, and have an idea who that is. And, but particularly, uh, part of my job as a candidate is to bring more people into the party, to build up the value of the party, to build up the reputation. And uh, that's part of what I'm doing by wanting to televise debate so people can see that, that uh, you know, my ideas about uh, bringing Albertans together, uh, having a responsible financial plan, uh, having an ethical, uh, ethically high standard that Albertans are demanding, and, uh, and, and a plan for the future, a vision to make Alberta even better than it is today. I, I, I'm going to assume, Rick, that you've heard uh, from the Jim Prentice team. They have replied publicly saying, yes, we'll participate, but also we think this is a, a desperate stunt. What do you make of that, that response? Uh, is that what you were hoping for uh, as a response from the Jim well, Prentice team? Well, you know what, I think, it's I think it's desperate to try to duck a debate. What are, you know, if, uh, if they're, you know, people are confident in their candidate, push them out front. Let Albertans know what they're going to get. Uh, my campaign is happy to let me be out front and uh, represent uh, my views and my vision for the future. And uh, I think Albertans deserve that from every camp. I, I, I need to ask you, Rick, now that we have you on the program, I want to get your take on Alison Redford resigning as an MLA last week. That was obviously a big bombshell in Alberta. Um, what, do you, what did you make at the time of her resignation? She resigned by letters to local newspapers. Are you, are you glad to have that chapter hopefully maybe behind you as a, as a PC leadership candidate? Well, you know what, it was uh, something between uh, former Premier Redford and her constituents. She made a decision to go. Uh, I, I, it's the right decision. And uh, now we need to get on with the future. Albertans have a bright future. They need to know that somebody's going to be uh, looking after uh, the economy, making sure that the jobs are going to be there for our kids and grandkids. And, and I've been focused on talking to Albertans to find out what's important to them and putting, uh, announcing policies and putting them uh, that I want to put in place to make that all come true. Uh, you know what, the Canada's economy is largely dependent upon the success of Alberta and we have a responsibility as, as a government to make sure that we are doing the things in, uh, in some cases to make sure the economy survives and thrives and in other cases doing the things that we need to do to get out of the way so those uh, entrepreneurial, industrial, industrious, hardworking Albertans will uh, continue building this great province and this great country. Mm -hmm. Hypothetically, Rick, I want to jump to September 7th now. We're going to put on our hypothetical hats and we're going to say that you win the leadership race on September 6th. You win it outright. On September 7th, do you ask for Doug Horner to resign? He put out a letter today showing that there is a call within the PC party uh, for him to step down over this uh, airplane traveling scandal. What would you make of the Doug Horner issue if you're elected leader? Well, well, Minister Horner's letter, it's un unclear actually whether it's from him or from the Prentice camp because in it, uh, in the letter, he actually excludes me and uh, Minister, you know, Thomas Lukasik Le Le from, from the, the list that it was delivered to and uh, he makes a pitch for Mr. Prentice in the letter. So it seems to me that was a letter from the Prentice camp. Uh, so I think maybe you should ask the Prentice camp what they think about that letter because it seems that that's where it originated. Okay, and I want to get, Rick, uh, from you as well, your thoughts on how the campaign's going. You've got just under a month now, I guess, before the first vote. So how's it going, and what do you think you have to do now in the closing weeks? 
you know what, what I've learned is if I can get to enough Albertans, I'll win for sure. Uh, the question is, can I get to enough Albertans in the time allotted? Because uh, we're really gaining momentum in our campaign. I'm hearing from people around the province that, uh, that I never knew saying, how do I sign up? How do I help? How do I sell memberships? And what's really great is I'm hearing from people that didn't necessarily buy a membership from our campaign that are saying, you know, I've actually looked at the shiny object. It's not as shiny. Uh, your campaign, you know, my campaign seems to have substance. And they're saying, uh, I, you know, lots of people are saying that they think I might be the right choice. So I'm grateful for that. I'm not taking any of it for granted. And I intend to work hard right up until the last minute representing Albertans and making sure that they know that they'll be the boss, we'll balance the budget, we'll run a highly ethical government, and we will build the economy that we need to to make sure our kids and our grandkids have jobs and opportunities like we who are adults now have enjoyed. I, I wonder, Rick, just to, in closing, how would you characterize the race to date? There has been some dirty tactics that have come up. We talked earlier about this idea of uh, the Prentice team perhaps buying memberships if, if supporters didn't have uh, votes. Overall, how has the campaign gone? And you're free to chat about that latest scandal if you want to. Well, it's the dog days of summer. So not everybody's engaged as, as I'd like them to be, but I think from now on till September, I think the interest rate, the interest level is going to go up and up. Uh, I, I, I think people really want to uh, want to know that their province is going to be in good hands. And for me, I've been working on actually increasing the value of, of our party and, and our government. And you don't do that by giving away memberships. You do by that by actually demonstrating the value of good government to people demonstrating the promise of a uh, high ethical standard and that's where my campaign has been focusing and, and frankly uh, I think it's resonating. Uh, I, again, I, I, wherever I go I'm warmly received, uh, I, I get uh, residual volunteers and, and, and membership sales and, and uh, people saying how do I become part of uh, you know Rick McIver trying to build a better future for Alberta and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, I know you know I don't take any of it for granted but I'm very optimistic. I think Albertans are pretty savvy people. They know that, that their uh, province is uh, dependent upon to, to lead the country and, and they really are shopping for the person that is close to the ground, uh, has, ex has experience, you know, uh, that I have uh, municipally uh, across the province. Uh, uh, someone that has actually worked in the trades, been, a, been an entrepreneur, and, and I think that's actually, uh, that's actually in line with uh, the way many Albertans are, have, having worked hard, uh, many entrepreneurs, uh, tradespeople, people that get up every day and build this province, whether their government tells them to or not, because they really, those Albertans really are the secret to success of this province, and they will be in decades and years to come. Okay, Rick McIver, thanks for joining us tonight. Good luck in the campaign. Thank you very much. It's been great to be here.